Good morning, everyone. Today uh, we are going to start our first chapter of book three, that is financial statement of a company. But before starting the chapter, we should know about the syllabus. Okay. How much portion will be there to cover up in this whole year? And uh, there are three books you all know. Which which book carries how much marks? Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a disturbance from the side of the student. So please mute other students. No, they should be able to listen you. But you shouldn't be able to listen them. So we are discussing first about the syllabus. So again, the total marks is 80 plus 20, what we have in standard 2 80 marks for theory and 20 marks for practical. This theory cover three books. Book one is partnership. Book two company accounts and book three financial statement analysis there is a weightage of marks from each and every book partnership books carry 40 marks company accounts carrying 20 marks and financial statement analysis carrying 20 marks. So each book is equally important for us because if you need to score a good marks in accountancy, that means you have to concentrate in each and every book. But the good, is, good thing is that he, in all these three books, all books having a separate concept, there is no connection between these three books. And today we are going to start our first book that is financial statement analysis. In this practical, there is a bifurcation of marks is 12 plus 4 plus 4. This 12 marks is a practical examination. This 4 marks is Viva. And this 4 marks again is a project. So these all are conducted by an external examination. Yeah, external examiner. So in these 20, in these 20 marks, these 12 marks coming from book number 3, that is financial statement analysis. So overall weightage of this book is 20 plus 12, that is 32. So all three books are equally important as I said. So today we are begin with the first book that is financial statement analysis. Those who have uh, purchased their book, please take it out or those who have not purchased it, we have sent the PDF in your WhatsApp or WhatsApp group. You can uh, just open it that particular PDF. So as I said that today's our first chapter is financial statement of a company. We have already studied one chapter with the name of sole proprietorship. in which we have prepared trading and profit and loss account second one is balance sheet the same thing we need to study in this chapter also that is financial statement of a company 
हम लोग जब पढ़े थे ट्रेडिंग एंड प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट देर इज नो स्पेसिफिक हेडिंग फॉर एनी पर्टिकुलर आइटम लाइक वी हैव ओपन अ ट्रेडिंग एंड प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट we are writing all expenses on this side and all income on this side this is the format of trading and profit and loss account and we have studied a balance sheet also in a t shape in a balance sheet this is the liability side and this one is the asset side right but in case of financial statement of a company there is a specific format for both the things for statement of pl as well as for balance sheet so if you have the book with you So if you have a book with you, you can check in page number one point five. If you have a book, you can check in page number one point five or that of PDF document. There is a specific format of a balance sheet described in part one of schedule three of the company that two thousand thirteen. So there is specific format for balance sheet in case of company that is part one of schedule three of company that two thousand thirteen. and there is a specific format for statement of pl as well in part 2 of schedule 3 of companies act 2013 so now we cannot put any item as per on our own, on our own wish uh, whether we write capital here then we write current liability then we write non current liability here we can write cash first or the current assets first but we can write here as fixed assets afterward but in case of a specific format of the companies act you cannot interchange any of the headings you have to follow the heading as specified in the formats that means you should remember each an individual item in which particular head that particular item will be shown you cannot change the headings in case of pl also that is profit and loss here the word account will be used in case of sole proprietorship firm why because it is in a t shape format this side will be a debit side this side will be a credit side that's why we are using the word account here but in case of state profit and loss account in case of a company we cannot use the word statement uh, profit and loss account instead of writing profit and loss account we should write the statement of pnl because now the format has changed as per the company act 2013 so we cannot prepare the format of t shape in case of company as well as we cannot prepare the format of balance sheet as per the sole proprietor so there is a specific format of company uh, balance sheet in part 1 of schedule 3 of the company act 13 and there is a specific format of part 2 of uh, part 2 of schedule 3 of the company act for statement of pl so we should know first how to prepare the format of a balance sheet and then we need to prepare a how uh, then we need to know about the statement of pl as well so first we start with the topic of how to prepare a balance sheet how to prepare a format of a balance sheet and what are the different items which cover under the balance sheet
so this is the format of a balance sheet it is written here the format of the balance sheet as prescribed in part 1 of schedule 3 of the compass act 2013 why i am always highlighting this point because right now the syllabus or the pattern of the question paper has been changed so we will having a 20 marks objective question in your paper and that 20 marks will be asked from a basic points also or from from a deep analysis also so you should know each and everything you should remember about the small parts which should be covered in the theory as well as for the as well as the practicals also so always remember the balance sheet comes under part 1 of schedule 3 of the companies act 2013 so what is the format first you need to write the name of the company and afterwards you will write the balance sheet as at so now the financial year has been changed in standard 11 we have started the financial year as 19 20 so this will be the date of balance sheet as at 31st march 2020 so should write always write balance sheet as at 31st march 2020 or instead of writing as at you may write balance sheet as on 31st march 2020 after that you will write the format that is first column is particulars after that it is notes number figure of the current period figure of the previous year that means previously in a balance sheet of a sole proprietorship there is only one column of a figure that is figures of the current year there is no separate column for two years that is current year and the previous year but in the case of company account you need to put or write the figures of both the years that is previous year as well as current year so always remember the current year figure will come first and afterwards the previous year will previous year figure will appear so here you may see it that this is an horizontal form or this is not a t shape form balance sheet so first heading will always will be your equity and liability always remember this and if the if you check the format of the balance sheet of the company you may find it there are two separate headings first it will started with the equity and liability portion and after totaling of the equity and liability portion there is second part start that is assets so we are writing in a different form here first we all write all equity and liability together and then we will write all assets together so this is not the same format as we have studied in sole proprietorship that is totally changed now so you should remember the uh, formats because there is a marks for the format also in the examination so you should remember the format exactly what items appears after which heading or under which heading so the first heading you know it is as it is called as major head that is equity and liability under equity and liability there are four different headings that is shareholders fund share application money pending allotment non current liabilities and current liability so these all four headings must be appear in this proper sequence only you cannot interchange the main headings you can interchange the items come under the heading that means if in the heading of shareholders fund there are three items that is share capital reserve in surplus money received against share warrant you may interchange the inside items but you cannot interchange the shareholder fund with share application money pending allotment so always while we are preparing a balance sheet of the company the first item will always be your shareholder fund then it will be your share application money pending allotment and then it will be your non current liability and then the last we should write current liability so today we will start with our first heading that is shareholder funds <laughs> so in shareholder fund there are three subheadings number one is share capital number two is reserve and surplus number three is money received against share warrants so we need to understand first what do you mean by shareholder fund then we will go for share capital then for reserve and surplus then for money received against share warrants so our first heading 
is shareholders fund what is shareholder fund equity is the liability towards shareholders and is termed as shareholders fund what do you mean by shareholder in case of sole proprietorship we know the single owner in case of sole proprietor a single owner amount invested by the person is called capital so here the shareholders fund the first heading under the shareholders fund is share capital right share capital so what does it capital means capital means amount invested by a person in his business is called as capital so if a single person invested an amount in a firm is called as capital and the firm is called as sole proprietor and if there are more number of people who are investing money in a case of a company will be called as shareholders so amount invested by a person in a company amount invested by a person in a company to acquire a share is known as share holders as we also know there are two type of shares one is preference shares second one is equity shares so if we check the main heading is always as equity and liability so equity means an amount that is equity is the liability towards shareholder and it's termed as shareholder fund तो इक्विटी का मतलब ही क्या है कि इक्विटी एक ऐसा लाइबिलिटी है जो किसके लिए है शेयर होल्डर्स के लिए है और उसी को हम लोग क्या बोलते हैं शेयर होल्डर्स फंड बोलते हैं तो शेयर होल्डर्स फंड का क्या मतलब है या शेयर कैपिटल का क्या मतलब है दैट इज एन अमाउंट इन्वेस्टेड बाय पर्सन इन अ कंपनी टू अक्वायर अ शेयर इज नोन एज शेयर होल्डर्स एंड देयर आर टू टाइप ऑफ शेयर्स दैट इज प्रीफरेंस शेयर्स एंड इक्विटी शेयर्स द क्वेश्चन विल बी रेज दैट वेदर both the holder of the shares whether it's a preference shares or equity share will be considered as share cap shareholders yes the holder of preference share as well as equity share both will be considered as share holder of a company and both are owner of a company so i repeat again our first heading as per the format of the balance sheet is the major heading that is equity and liability under equity and liability the main subheading will come as shareholders fund and after that the first item will be appear as share capital so this shareholder fund shareholder fund is the equity is the liability towards shareholder that means equity ek aisa liability hai jo kiske liye hai shareholders ke liye hai jisko hum log shareholders fund bolte hain to shareholders fund ke andar kya aayega the first item will appear as 
share capital the share capital means amount invested by the person in the company to acquire a share is known as shareholders to jo bhi person company mein paisa invest karta hai uska share acquire karne ke liye usko hum log shareholders bolte hain and there are two type of shares that is preference shares and equity share both the shareholder whether he or she is a preference shareholder or an equity shareholder will be considered as shareholder of the company and whatever amount they have invested in the company will be called as share capital so we can say both equity and preference shareholders are owner of the company you have studied in bst of standard 11 the rights of preference shareholder and equity shareholders are different so what are the different rights of the preference shareholder and equity shareholder preference shareholders having a preferential rights preference shareholder having a preferential right right to what right to dividend right to withdrawal their capital at the time of winding up of the company Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir. There are two students, Tehsin Ansari and Chaitanya. You please mute yourself. There is a noise coming from your end. Please mute yourself. Oh, that's better. Sir, please continue. Yes, sir. So. a preference shareholder having a preferential right to dividend withdrawal their capital at a time of winding up of the company iska matlab kya hai ki preferential shareholders ko that is preference shareholder ko hamesha pehle dividend degi company jab bhi company dividend declare karegi tab aur uske baad agar kuch profit remain rehta hai company ke paas mein then that profit will be given to the equity shareholder in the form of dividend so always preference shareholder give, will get the preferential right over the equity shareholders and at the time of winding up of the company also jab bhi company band hogi to jo bhi paisa company ke paas bachega after clearing off its all outsider liability they will pay the first amount to the preference shareholder and after repaying to the preference shareholder any amount left that will be given to the equity shareholders iska matlab ye hai ki agar कंपनी बंद होती है तो पहले सारा पैसा अपने आउटसाइडर लाइबिलिटीज का वो पे ऑफ करेगी उसके बाद अगर पैसा बचेगा तब वो पैसा आप प्रीफेंस शेयर होल्डर को देंगे आफ्टर रिपेइंग टू द प्रीफेंस शेयर होल्डर उसके बाद कुछ पैसा बचेगा दैट विल बी गिवन टू द इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स क्लियर सो द फर्स्ट हेडिंग वी हैव डन दैट इज अ शेयर कैपिटल तो शेयर कैपिटल का क्या मतलब है एन अमाउंट इन्वेस्टेड बाय अ पर्सन इन अ कंपनी टू अक्वायर द शेयर इज नोन एज Preference is known as share capital. Share capital, the shares are of two types. That is preference share as well as equity share. And who are those? They are the owner of the company. Preference shareholders having the preferential right over the equity shareholder in case of dividend, in case of their capital at the time of winding up of the company. So this is called as share capital. Now there are different types of share capital. types of share capital types of share capital number 1 is authorized capital or nominal capital number 2 issued capital 
नंबर थ्री सब्सक्राइब कैपिटल इन नंबर थ्री देर आर टू डिफरेंट हेड्स दैट इज सब्सक्राइब एंड फुली पेड अप एंड सब्सक्राइब बट नॉट फुली पेड अप so type of capital is types is authorized capital jiska dusra naam hai nominal capital next one is issued capital and after that subscribed capital subscribed capital have it two subheads that is subscribed and fully paid up and second one is subscribed but not fully paid up what is authorized capital so before we are starting with a types of capital we should know what do you mean by shares a capital of a company divided into small units which having same denomination so what is share a capital of the company divided into small unit which are having the same denomination is called as share iska kya matlab hai ki capital company ka divide hua matlab ye hai ki suppose a company apna shuru kar rahi hai suppose 10 lakh rupees a company started with a capital of rupees 10 lakh now this 10 lakh will be divided into the small part suppose ek pencil ka box hai to pencil ka box ka rate kitna hai suppose one pencil box costing rupees 100 to usi tarah yahan pa jo company ka capital hai this is a box iska value kitna hai rupees 10 lakh तो अगर ये पेंसिल बॉक्स का दाम सौ रुपए का है तो अगर हम इसमें से ये जानना चाहे कि इसमें से हर एक पेंसिल का दाम कितना है तो वी नीड टू डिवाइड दिस हंड्रेड रुपीज बाय नंबर ऑफ यूनिट ऑफ अ पेंसिल इन अ बॉक्स तो सपोज आपके बॉक्स में ट्वेंटी पेंसिल है तो एक पेंसिल का दाम कितना रुपीज फाइव सो इन सेम केस अगर कंपनी का टोटल कैपिटल टेन लाख रुपीज का है तो ये एक बॉक्स है तो अगर कंपनी का एक शेयर का दाम दैट इज एक पेंसिल का दाम अगर पांच रुपए है तो यू बी एबल टू नो कि आपके पास कितना नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स है तो अगर कंपनी अपना एक शेयर का दाम दस रुपए रखती है तो टोटल कंपनी का शेयर कितना होगा वन लाख शेयर्स सो दीज वन लाख शेयर विल बी इशूड टू ऑल शेयर होल्डर्स दीज वन लाख शेयर विल बी इशूड टू ऑल share holders who are interested to invested money in the form in the company in the form of their shares only to ye jo 1 lakh share hai this whole 1 lakh share will be a small unit ek share ka dam 10 rupaya hai aur total capital kitna hai company ke paas mein 10 lakh rupaye ka to ye jo 10 rupaya hai isko hum log bolte hain face value of a share jiska dusra naam hai nominal value aur par value तो अगर आपका एक शेयर का बेस प्राइस दस रुपए है तो उसको हम लोग फेस वैल्यू भी बोल सकते हैं नॉमिनल वैल्यू भी बोल सकते हैं और पार वैल्यू भी बोल सकते हैं एंड दीज आर अ कंपनी टोटल नंबर ऑफ शेयर विच कैन बी इशूड बाय अ कंपनी टू इट्स मेंबर्स और टू द शेयर होल्डर अ शेयर होल्डर मे बी अ जनरल पब्लिक डायरेक्टर एनी वन कैन बाय अ शेयर ऑफ अ कंपनी देर इज नो रिस्ट्रिक्शन so what is a share a share a capital of a company divided into small units which having same denomination to so, example ke liye hamare paas agar 10 lakh rupaye ka capital hai aur hamara ek share ka dam agar 10 rupaye hai to total number of share kitna hoga company ke paas mein 10 lakh ek lakh shares ka to so, ye total isko kya kehte hain authorized capital 
that is a capital which is issued by the company during its lifetime authorized capital means a capital issued by the company during its lifetime to a public is called as authorized capital so again we we'll back to our main topic that is type of share capital our first heading is authorized capital or nominal capital so authorized capital ka matlab hai a capital issued by a company during its lifetime will be called as authorized capital suppose we are taking an example which will help in the next two types of share capital as well suppose we are taking an example the authorized capital of the company is rupees 10 lakh agreed so we are taking an example the authorized capital of the company is rupees 10 lakh now what is issued capital suppose for again we are taking an example out of this 10 lakh the company offered to public out of this 10 lakh rupees the company offered to public to subscribe for their shares for rupees 8 lakh to agar aapke paas 10 lakh rupaye ka share capital hai jisme se aap public ko issue karna chahte hain the important word is the company are offering to public kar nahi diye hain the words are different the words is offered to public for subscription offered to public for subscription will be called as issued capital to agar aapke paas 10 lakh rupaye ka share hai jisme se aap 8 lakh ka share public ko bechna chahte hain you are offering to the public will be called as issued capital now out of this 8 lakh suppose a subscription will be taken by the public for 7 lakh 50000 rupees ab isme se Wait a minute. so again authorized capital that is a capital issued by a company during its lifetime will be called as authorized capital we have taken an example ki company ke paas 10 lakh rupaye ka total share hai jo company apne lifetime mein public ko issue kar sakti hai that is called as authorized capital again if the out of rupees 10 lakh the company have issued 8 lakh to the public the company have issued means company has offered to public for sub subscription How much? Rupees eight lakh. मतलब company offer कर रही public को कि आठ लाख रुपए का share वो बेचना चाहती है. That is called as issued capital. And now out of this eight lakh, suppose the public has subscribed for rupees seven lakh fifty thousand share capital will be called as subscribed. तो जितना company ने offer किया है, 
उसमें से पब्लिक जितना खरीद लेगी दैट इज एक्सेप्ट कर लेगी उसको हम लोग बोलते हैं सब्सक्राइब कैपिटल नाउ सब्सक्राइब कैपिटल हैविंग टू पार्ट्स दैट इज सब्सक्राइब एंड फुल्ली पेड अप सब्सक्राइब बट नॉट फुल्ली पेड अप तो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सब्सक्राइब एंड फुल्ली पेड अप एंड सब्सक्राइब एंड नॉट फुल्ली पेड अप अगेन वी आर गोइंग टू द प्रीवियस स्लाइड दिस वन तो हियर वी हैव डिसाइडेड कि एक शेयर का दाम कितना हो सकता है टेन रुपीज एक शेयर का दाम कितना हो सकता है टेन रुपीज तो एक शेयर का जो दाम है दस रुपए का इसको हम लोग क्या तो फेस वैल्यू बोलते हैं या नॉमिनल वैल्यू बोलते हैं या पार वैल्यू बोलते हैं नाउ द कंपनी हैज एन ऑप्शन कि ये जो दस रुपए का एक शेयर है इसको कितने पार्ट में कंपनी लेना चाहती है द कंपनी कैन एक्सेप्ट दिस मनी in many number of times that is in case of lump sum or installment it depends upon the norms of the company or their terms and condition company chahe to is 10 rupaye ko ek saath bhi le sakti hai jisko hum log lump sum bolte hain ya company chahe to is 10 rupaye ko installment mein bhi le sakti hai that is part wise to agar company 10 rupaye ek saath le rahi hai तो जो भी पब्लिक ने शेयर खरीदा है या उसने पब्लिक कंपनी को एप्लीकेशन दिया है शेयर खरीदने के लिए वो पूरा का पूरा दस रुपया कंपनी को एक बार में पे कर देगा एंड अगर कंपनी इंस्टॉलमेंट में पैसा ले रही है सपोज तीन रुपया लिया चार रुपया लिया फिर तीन रुपया लिया इसको हम लोग क्या बोलते हैं इंस्टॉलमेंट तो इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द कंपनी वेदर द कंपनी वॉन्ट अ फुल मनी ऑफ द शेयर एट वन टाइम और दे एक्सेप्ट द मनी इन इंस्टॉलमेंट इट विल डिपेंड अपॉन दी कंपनी तो अगर कंपनी एक साथ पूरा पैसा लेगी तो उसको हम लोग बोलेंगे सब्सक्राइब एंड फुल्ली पेड अप तो अगर शेयर होल्डर ने पूरे का पूरा दस रुपया कंपनी को पे कर दिया है तो उसको हम लोग बोलेंगे सब्सक्राइब एंड फुल्ली पेड अप अगर कंपनी को पूरा का पूरा दस रुपया नहीं मिला है सपोज अभी कंपनी को उस शेयर पे सिर्फ आठ रुपया ही मिला है तो उसको बोलेंगे सब्सक्राइब बट नॉट फुल्ली पेड तो कितना पैसा मिला है उस पर डिपेंड करेगा कि वो सब्सक्राइब एंड फुल्ली पेड के कैटेगरी में जाएगा या सब्सक्राइब बट नॉट फुल्ली पेड के कैटेगरी में जाएगा तो इफ यू हैव रिसीव द होल अमाउंट ऑफ द शेयर After it has been called up, then it will be called as subscribe and fully paid up. And if they have not received the whole amount on the share capital, that it will be called as subscribe but not fully paid up. So how to identify कि वो fully paid up है या नहीं? तो यहाँ दो condition है. The condition one is full amount have been called by the company. and second condition is full amount have been received by the company so if these two condition are satisfied then only the amount of share will appear under the heading of subscribe and fully paid up to so, agar isme se koi ek condition fulfill nahi hua then it will always appear under the heading of subscribe but not fully paid up That means अगर कंपनी ने अभी शेयर होल्डर से आठ रुपया मांगा है एट रुपीज कॉल्ड अप तो आपको कितने का एक शेयर था दस रुपए का तो दस में से कंपनी ने कितना मांगा आठ तो अगेन इट विल अपियर अंडर दिंग एंड सब्सक्राइब बट नॉट फुल्ली पेड सपोज कंपनी ने मांगा आठ है एट कॉल्ड अप बट अ शेयर होल्डर पेड फुल rupees 10 so whether it will be considered as subscribe but the subscribe and fully paid up the answer is no until and unless the company call for the whole amount and they have received the whole amount the share will not be considered as subscribe and fully paid up so jab tak company nahi mangengi pura paisa aur usko pura paisa nahi mil jata tab tak wo subscribe and fully paid up ka category mein nahi aayega अगर कंपनी ने पूरा पैसा मांगा है पूरा पैसा नहीं मिला तो वो सब्सक्राइब बट नॉट फुल्ली पेड अप में आएगा अगर कंपनी ने पैसा नहीं मांगा है लेकिन शेयर होल्डर ने पूरा पैसा दे दिया तो भी वो सब्सक्राइब बट नॉट फुल्ली पेड अप कैटेगरी में आएगा दैट मींस एन अमाउंट ऑफ शेयर रिसीव्ड विल ओनली
only be considered as subscribement fully paid up once the whole amount has been called up by the company and the full amount have been received by the company if both these two conditions are satisfied then only the amount will be covered under subscribe and fully paid up and if any of the one condition have not been satisfied then it will appear under the heading of subscribe but not fully paid up sir please explain once again which point subscribe capital yes sir okay so i'm just uh, starting up from the beginning again authorized capital issued capital and subscribed capital what is authorized capital and amount of capital which can be issued by the company during its lifetime to so, jo capital company apne pure lifetime mein shareholder ko de sakti hai usko hum log authorized bolte hain usse zyada wo kar sakti hai lekin are different terms and condition are there to so, till now just understand ki jitna company share bech sakti hai apne lifetime mein the maximum limit that will be called as authorized capital in our example we are taken as 10 lakh rupees ab isme se company kitna issue karna chahti hai suppose 8 lakh so this 8 lakh is got issued capital kyun issued kyunki ye offer to public hai company public ko bol rahi hai ki hum aapko itna share bechna chahte hain it doesn't means ki shareholder utna share khareed hi lega so the condition is the company offer to public for subscription is called as issued capital ab isme se jitna bhi share company ka acquire karega shareholder in case if of our example it's 750 will be your subscribe capital so we can say in short authorized capital issued capital and subscribe capital authorized capital will be always be more than or equal to your issued capital or we can say an issued capital will always be more than or equal to subscribe capital to so, ye bol sakte hain ki authorized capital jab bhi hoga wo ya to issued capital ke barabar hoga ya issued capital se bada hoga ya phir hum ye bol sakte hain ki jo issued capital hai wo subscribe capital ke ya to barabar hoga ya subscribe capital se bada hoga that means in neither of the cases subscribe capital kabhi bhi na issued capital se bada ho sakta hai na hi authorized capital se bada ho sakta hai तो ये एक की पॉइंट है जिसका मैं याद रखना बिकॉज इट विल हेल्प वेल प्रिपेयरिंग द बैलेंस शीट यू विल नॉट मेक अ मिस्टेक इफ यू रिमेंबर दिस थिंग कि आपका ऑथराइज कैपिटल हमेशा इशूड कैपिटल से बड़ा होगा या उसके इक्वल होगा दैट इज मोर देन और इक्वल टू योर इशूड कैपिटल एंड योर इशूड कैपिटल इज ऑलवेज बी मोर देन और इक्वल टू योर सब्सक्राइब कैपिटल now come back to subscribe capital there are two headings subscribe and fully paid up we have taken the example ki hamare ek share ka dam kitna hai 10 rupaye ka so we can say ki hamare paas kitna number of shares hai that is 75000 shares to so, company ke paas 75000 shares hai ab company ne 75000 shares issue kiya hai public ko jisme se ek share ka dam 10 rupaye hai to yahan par company ke paas option hai कि वो दस रुपए एक साथ भी ले सकती है या इंस्टॉलमेंट में भी ले सकती है तो डिपेंड्स अपॉन दी कंपनी ओनली कि कंपनी उस पैसे को कैसे एक्सेप्ट करेगी आइदर इन लमसम मेथड और आइदर इन इंस्टॉलमेंट मेथड सो अगर कंपनी पूरा का पूरा दस रुपए एक साथ एक्सेप्ट करती है दैट इज टेन रुपीज इन लमसम मेथड देन द होल अमाउंट विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज सब्सक्राइब एंड fully paid up lekin agar company installment the paisa accept kar rahi hai then you have to uh, check it on whether it will appear under the heading of subscribe and fully paid up whether it will appear under the heading of subscribe or subscribe but not fully paid up or in both to so, agar company ne pura paisa mang liya hai shareholder se that is 10 ka 10 rupya mang liya hai aur pura ka pura 10 rupya company ko mil bhi chuka hai then it will become under the heading of subscribe and fully paid up lekin agar in dono mein se ek bhi condition chhoot gaya ya satisfy nahi hua tab wo kis heading ke andar aayega subscribe but not fully paid up ke category mein aayega iske liye example diya hai sab company ne 8 rupya manga hai jisme se company ko 8 rupya mila hai to agar 8 rupya manga hai that means hamara share ka value kitna 10 rupya लेकिन कंपनी ने मांगा कितना आठ तो इट विल बी नॉट फुल्ली पेड अप कैटेगरी अगर कंपनी ने आठ रुपया मांगा है दस रुपया मिल गया तो भी वो किस कैटेगरी में आएगा सब्सक्राइब बट नॉट फुल्ली पेड अप व्हाई बिकॉज देर आर टू कंडीशंस विच शुड बी सेटिस्फाइड टू चेक वेदर द शेयर्स आर fully paid up or not and both the condition must must be satisfied together to appear under the heading of subscribe and fully paid up to so, is case mein kya ho raha hai ki aapka fully paid up ka category mein tabhi aayega jab pura paisa company mang chuki hogi and pura paisa company ko 
मिल चुका होगा इस दोनों में से एक भी हेडिंग छूटा दैट मीन्स दैट हेडिंग दैट अमाउंट विल अपियर अंडर दिंग ऑफ सब्सक्राइब बट नॉट फुल क्लियर आकर्ष यस सर सो वी हैव डन विद द फर्स्ट थ्री हेडिंग्स दैट इज ऑथराइज कैपिटल इश्यूड कैपिटल एंड सब्सक्राइब कैपिटल देर आर मोर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कैपिटल आफ्टर दिस दैट इज ऑल्ड अप कैपिटल and paid up capital what is called up capital is called up capital and somebody in the name of chaitanya please please switch off mute yourself chaitanya somebody in the name of chaitanya please mute yourself avantika please mute yourself ashutosh sharma please mute yourself Sir, please continue. Sir, yes, please sir. continue. Yes, sir. So, called up capital means an amount called up by the company on its shares from the public or the shareholder from the shareholder. So an amount called up by the company on its share from the shareholder will be called as called up capital. So suppose I am taking an example. The face value of a share is rupees ten. face value of a share is rupees 10 per share now the company want this 10 rupees in installment basis that is 3 plus 3 plus 4 to ye jo installment mein company paisa mangegi shareholders se usko kya bolenge always the first amount will be called as application money the second amount will be called as allotment money and afterwards whatever amount will be left will always be called as call money so these three are the different installment of a share value of rupees 10 each that is company will call for rupees 3 on application 3 rupees on allotment 4 rupees on the call money so whatever amount company is asking or calling for a calling from the shareholder will be called as called up capital called up capital so an amount an 
an amount called by a company on its shares will be called as called up capital and next one is paid up capital amount received by a company on its shares will be called as paid up capital so again called up capital and share capital amount called up by the company on its shares that is called as called up capital amount received by a company on its share will be called as paid up capital so in this case suppose we are taken an example ki company ne 3 rupees plus 3 rupees ye dono paisa abhi manga hai so what is the called up value of a share rupees 6 company ne 3 rupees application ka 3 rupees allotment ka manga hai that is total rupees 6 will be your called up capital and out of this 6 rupees suppose the company has received only the application money so jitna paisa company ko mil chuka hai us share pe that will be called as your paid up capital so called means amount called up by the company on its share is called as called up capital and paid up means amount received by a company on its shares is called as paid up capital so again i am taking the example suppose company ne 3 rupees application ka and 3 rupees allotment ka manga hai so the total called up value will be rupees 6 3 plus 3 now the company has only received rupees 3 on such share this 3 rupees will be called as paid up capital so that there is a difference between paid up amount and an called up amount so again i am repeating amount called up that means jitna paisa manga gaya hai shareholder se usko hum log called up share bolte hain jitna paisa company ko mil chuka hai us share pe usko hum log paid up share capital bolte hain so how to link this with the previous format just remember yahan ek word likha tha fully paid up and not fully paid up to jo paisa mil chuka hai usko paid up ka category mein dalte hain whether it will be in the form of fully paid up category or whether it will be the form of not fully paid up category mm mm so this is the first part of a share capital that is the first sub heading this is the first again the sub first heading that is first is equity and liability then we have started about shareholders fund then the first sub heading that is share capital so what is a share capital a share capital is an amount invested by a person in a company to acquire its shares is called as share capital share capital are of two types that is share are of two types that is preference shares and equity shares both shares that is preference shareholders as well as equity shareholder will be considered as owner of the company preference shareholders having the preferential right that is right to dividend withdraw their capital at a time of winding up that means company jab bhi dividend degi tab hamesha pehle paisa preference shareholder ko milega तब पैसा फिर उसके बाद इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर को पेमेंट करेगी कंपनी आफ्टर दैट टाइप्स ऑफ शेयर कैपिटल 
So we have studied about authorized capital, issued capital, and subscribed capital. What is authorized capital? And a capital issued by a company during its lifetime will be called as authorized capital. Jitna company apne pure lifetime mein bet sakte hai public ko usko hum log authorized capital bolte hai. Usme se jitna share company public ko offer karegi kharidne ke liye that will be called as issued capital. And after those issued capital company public jitna acquire karegi ya kharidegi public se company se usko hum log subscribe capital bolte hai. Now subscribe capital will further be categorized into two subhead that is subscribe and fully paid up and subscribe but not fully paid up. What is subscribe and fully paid up? That means there are two conditions that must be satisfied. That is the full amount have been called up by the company and full amount have been received by the company. If both the conditions are satisfied, then only it will be considered as subscribe and fully paid up. And if any of these conditions have not been satisfied, then it will always be considered as subscribe but not fully paid up. After that, we have studied called up capital. After that, we have studied called up capital. That is an amount called up by a company on its share from a share.